This is an intercooler. This is also an intercooler. They're both the same size, they both do the same thing, but they're both made very differently, and that has an effect on how they perform. This time on Plasma Tech, we're gonna tell you why. It's only been the last 35 years that the intercooler has become a fundamental part of every performance turbo engine. Before then, nearly every factory turbo car wasn't intercooled at all. But then in the mid 80s, car manufacturers started to fit intercoolers and it changed performance overnight. For example, Buick gave their famous Grand National Turbo V6 a 35 horsepower boost overnight by adding one of these right here. Now, the intercooler helps increase performance because Basically, as a turbo creates boost, it's generating a lot of heat. Sometimes it's more than 200 degrees Celsius. Now, as air gets hotter, it gets less dense. That's why hot air rises. Now, with that less air density, it means that that air charge can't carry as much fuel. This combined with that high heat can lead to detonation, high exhaust gas temperatures, and just a straight up not good time for your engine. By using an intercooler, we reduce the temperature in the air charge coming from the turbo. This allows us to create a more stable air charge, which can carry more fuel into the engine. And as we all know, more fuel equals bigger bang, and bigger bang means more horsepower. That said, just using an intercooler where there wasn't one before isn't always gonna be the best answer. There's a bit of nerd stuff involved here to make sure you get the right intercooler for your project. The first thing you need to know is the two different types of intercooler construction. That's bar and plate and tube and fin. Bar and plate intercoolers are made by stacking a series of aluminium bars, plates and fins in an alternating pattern to create the sealed tunnels that air can pass through. Hot air from the turbo passes through lengthways, while the cool air from outside passes through widthways. As hot air passes through the intercooler, the finning helps draw out the heat and that's exchanged with the cold air that's passing through from the outside. It pretty much works just like your radiator, except you're flowing compressed air through it instead of coolant. It doesn't get much simpler than that. Here at Plasman, we make our tube and fin intercoolers by using individual laser welded square tube. These square tubes are then fitted to a stamp header plate and the whole lot is put into a nitrogen filled furnace brazier to seal it all together. Just like a bar and plate, Finning is used in both tunnels to help draw out the heat from the air passing through and exchange it with the cool air from outside. Almost every modern turbo car from the factory uses a tube and fin intercooler. Let's break it down into five key areas. Construction, weight, cooling, flow, and cost. The tube and fin intercooler has a light but strong construction, and this allows it to exchange heat a lot more efficiently. Bar and plate intercoolers are a modular design and that means it's real easy to make them taller and wider because you're just changing the length of how these bars and plates are cut. But that doesn't necessarily make them more efficient and in most cases it just makes them heavier. A tube and fin intercooler on the other hand, well, the larger you make it, the more efficient it does become because you're using larger tubing. But this requires physically making larger tubing and larger header plates which can be a lot more costly than making a bigger bar and plate intercooler. Now of cooling, both intercoolers are achieving the same end goal, lower IATs, but the way they go about it is a lot different. But where these two differ in cooling is how they handle heat soak. Now heat soak is when the intercooler hits a point where it can no longer exchange heat fast enough with the cool air passing through. Bar and plate intercoolers are really good at holding off heat soak for a long time and it's because of these thick bars that are used in its construction. But once they do get hot, they hold onto that heat for a long time and it takes a lot to get them cool again. Whereas the tube and fin, because of the thin but strong construction of the tubes, it allows it to exchange heat a lot faster, but it will heat soak a lot quicker. However, once a tube and fin intercooler does get heat soaked, it recovers a whole lot faster. And in most cases, it's actually more like a recovery cycle. It's recovering as fast as it's soaking. 
Think of the difference this way. Imagine you're running your car down the drag strip and you give it three quick back-to-back -back hits. The bar and plate intercooler by the third run will probably become that heat soak that you start to lose a little bit of power at the top end. And once you complete it, it's gonna take a long time for it to get back to a temperature where it can perform like it did on the first run. Whereas the tube and fin intercooler, by the time you get to the third run, it too might be starting to get a little too heat soak. But by the time you finish the third run, come back to the pits, let it sit, it's ready to go again. Now let's talk about weight because in most cases you're trying to keep the weight down in your car as low as possible because less weight means more performance, right? Now while the bar and plate intercooler holds off heat soak for a really long time because of the thick bars used in its construction, that also means that there's a lot of weight. In some cases, it's almost double that of a tube and fin. Tube and fin intercoolers are lighter because of that tube and fin construction. The materials used are thin, but strong. In modern intercooling, we found that flow is really important. The more flow you have, the more efficient your intercooler is, to a point. There still needs to be some kind of back pressure in there to allow the finning to draw the heat out of the air. The tube and fin intercooler's square tube design gives it a lot greater volume than a bar and plate intercooler. Now more volume means more capability for airflow. Now a bar and plate intercooler can flow just as well as a tube and fin intercooler up to a certain point. The only way to increase airflow is to increase the size of the tubing or decrease the amount of finning. Trying to do that in a bar and plate intercooler generally means having to increase the thickness of these bars right here and doing that adds more weight and more heat soak. Considering the compromise you have to make to get more flow out of a bar and plate intercooler, it's why we prefer to go with a tube and fin. Now on the cost. Now back in the day, the bar and plate intercooler was actually more expensive than a tube and fin and that's because the process to make this was brand new. But over time, the technology used to make a bar and plate intercooler has become cheaper. So bar and plates have become cheaper to make. Tube and fin intercoolers actually used to be the cheaper of the two and it was because they were basically built like car radiators. But over the years, there's been new techniques developed to make these things more efficient and better than they ever were before. But with new technology comes higher cost. So these days, the roles are reversed. The bar and plate is usually the cheaper option, but the tube and fin is more expensive. In terms of cost, which one you choose really comes down to what kind of budget you're looking to spend on your project and what kind of power you're making, what kind of boost levels you're running, the size turbocharger you're using. And these are all factors we're gonna talk about in a future episode. So now you know a little more than what you did before. It's just the basics. There is a lot to know about intercoolers, but if you do have any more questions, you can always check out plasmaman.com, hit us up on Facebook, or check out our YouTube channel.